So you mentioned from a teaching perspective, you like to stay with things that are more empirically validated or at least more fleshed out from a research perspective. You just touched on some, I think, really powerful ideas from Rumi and Akratole that are potentially, you know, within another category of, or field. And I'm curious as to what some of the either ideas or concepts or insights that you have encountered personally are that have been most impactful on you that are not necessarily research backed or empirically validated or you know have, have a rigorous basis yes yeah, so um you know I, i'll share with you some some interventions that i've used and implemented in my life and yet i have not found a satisfactory foundation in research you know, work on NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. I can't tell you the number of times that I've spoken to NLP practitioners and said to them, why don't you do research? Because, you know, I've tried it and it's great. And I'm sure that if they did research on uh, some of their NLP interventions, they find terrific results and it can become a mainstream. Again, there are many people who study NLP you know, and Tony Robbins really popularized it. And yet, it's not respected in academia because there is not enough. There's not much research on it. Uh, so this is one area that, you know, I personally I use. You know, I went through an NLP practitioner's course, really enjoyed it, really got some things out of it. But unfortunately, couldn't find sufficient research on it for me to include it as part of my, uh, my curriculum. Mm, that's, a re- that's a great example. I love that. It's interesting, to my knowledge, at least, within neurolinguistic programming, part of the core philosophy is, in a sense, anti-research and anti-theory, I believe, isn't it? In that, in that a big emphasis is on results and solutions for the individual within the intervention without too much theorizing and things like that. The thing, though, is that you can research outcome. In fact, this is my favorite kind of research. You know, you know I, I do teach theory in my classes, but only enough so that students feel that they are on a rigorous ground. But the purpose of teaching theory is not as an end in itself. It's so that they can engage in effective practice. Kurt Lewin, who's uh, maybe the father of social psychology, said, you know, decades ago, he said, you know, a good theory is a theory that works in practice. It's only as good as it is in practice. Mm. Nassim Taleb, the author of Anti-Fragile, has a great quote. Uh, He says, what's rational is what works, which I think is, is an interesting one in that vein of thinking. Yes, exactly. And what he means there and what he does there in that, in that one profound sentence is, is connect um, theory and practice, mind and body. Uh, rather, you know, the dualism that exists so often, you know, it's, well, it's good in theory, but I don't know about practice or vice versa, you know, as, as, as the saying goes, you know, as, as the, the academic says, this may work in practice, but does it work in theory? If what you've heard on Flow Research Collective Radio has been helpful, Please consider doing us a solid and leaving us a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you are listening to this. Reviews help us connect to a wider audience so we can get these peak performance principles out to more people. 